biggest fraud in Wall Street history, federal investigators say famed Wall Street money manager Bernard Madoff ran a scheme that cheated investors out of $50 billion. He was arrested and charged with securities fraud in what prosecutors say was a scheme that may have swindled clients out of as much as $50 billion. It Hedge fund swindler Samuel Israel. Last week it appeared he might have killed himself rather than serve a long stretch in prison. But tonight federal authorities think he staged the whole thing. Nine-year-old Eric Stein is bringing home a million dollars a month. Stein is the mastermind of one of Nevada's all-time largest investment scams. I embraced the criminal lifestyle and I, I liked it. Held in Germany, wanted in America. Financier Martin Frankel, who may have committed the biggest fraud in history. Martin Frankel's story spans the globe, from Wall Street to the Vatican. You're how old at this point? 22. And you're a convicted felon? Oh, yeah. You'll be serving prison time? On top of what I've already served, yes. You owe millions of dollars to several people, investors? Correct. How Hakan Yalanja got to this point in his life is the story of a brilliant college kid who engineered a hedge fund fraud so elaborate, so well staged, that even the biggest Wall Street banks believed him. If you were going to start a Hall of Fame for con men, Barry Minko would have to be one of the first inductees. He was one of the most famous stock swindlers of the 1980s, and certainly the youngest. At age 20, he was the boy wonder of Wall Street, CEO of a $300 million company. At 22, he'd been convicted of 57 counts of fraud and was off to federal prison. On Sunday, Schrenker, a daredevil pilot whose exploits are chronicled on YouTube, flew in a private plane from Indiana to Florida. Over Alabama, he radioed a phony distress call before parachuting from this plane that would soon crash in a North Florida swamp. Best way to describe it, um, right now he's our own little Bernie Madoff. Schrenker had plenty of reasons to run. He's currently under investigation in Indiana for insurance fraud. Accused of excessively trading clients' investments in order to fatten his fees by hundreds of thousands of dollars. By the time authorities arrived at Schrenker's $4 million home, he'd long since disappeared. I committed what's believed to be the largest bank fraud and title fraud in the history of the city of Philadelphia. Over $8 million. $8.6 million. Okay, and boy band promoter turned federal prisoner. Lou Perlman sentenced today for defrauding banks and investors out of as much as $300 million. The judge handed down a 25-year prison sentence on the fraud and conspiracy charges, but Perlman can have a month reduced for each million he pays back. With <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is part two for this news report for today for Monday, June 24th, 2013. All right, I'm ready to go here covering the economy. Former vice president of HSBC says we were laundering hundreds of millions for drugs. The global banking giant HSBC is a criminal operation. It says here <clears throat> they're charging a former officer for the company's southern New York region in a video interview with World Net Daily. John Cruz, a former vice president, has turned over to the uh, uh, World, Net, World Net Daily, more than 1,000 pages of documents, including customer accounts uh, of ledgers for dozens of companies to which he charges financial institutions uh, was laundering money each month. I pulled these documents because I thought they were evidence of suspicious activity taking place. This is what Cruz uh, affirmed when presented with these various uh, HSBC computer ledgers, these same documents I brought to the bank security and my managers in the bank. Cruz explained that even when he let banks, uh, bank managers, know he was taping the conversation, the managers were not interested in what he was saying. HSBC is a criminal organization, he stressed. It's a culture of crime, including hundreds of billions of dollars in transactions uh, that have links to drug trafficking, terrorist financing, and other criminal activity. You effed up. You trusted us. Talking ratings uh, agency with Chris Hayes. That was a response from the spokesman for the ratings agency Standard & Poor's when they contacted him a few weeks ago in the advance of a new Rolling Stone feature, The Last Mystery of the Financial Crisis, which describes the role the ratings agency played in causing the 2008 crash. It says here, the materials those lawyers found leaves virtually no doubt that the rating agencies like Moody's and S&P essentially put their analysis up for sale 
uh, in the years leading up to the crash. Liber case ensnares more banks as UK prosecutors allege staff from JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, and others tried to fix rates. Employees of some of the world's largest financial institutions conspired with a former bank trader to rig benchmark interest rates. This is what British prosecutors alleged Thursday. Banks go after homeowners years after foreclosure. Banks have been taking homeowners to court long after they lose their properties in foreclosure, extending the nightmare of mortgages gone bad. What's happening is lenders are pursuing former mortgage holders for old debts like deficiency balance, which is also known as underwater amount. There's a difference between the amount of the mortgage and the actual property value. Sometimes difference can uh, total hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the homeowner is still on the hook to pay the deficiency balance even after losing the property. Part of the nightmare for foreclosed homeowners is that the lenders often wait several years until the homeowner has recovered financially before they go after the debt. By this time, significant interest has been added to the original debt amount. In addition to banks going after these costly judgments, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the two quasi-governmental lending agencies, are seeking them in order to recoup money lost in the crisis. They claim that they only go after what is known as strategic defaulters, people who stop paying their mortgage loan but continue to pay their bills. Next up, uh, APD, the police email says traffic money to fund future pay raises. So Channel 2 Action News has obtained an email sent to Atlantic Police, Atlanta Police that says traffic ticket money will fund future pay raises. So it says here there's concerns that linking pay raises through tickets creates an indirect quota system. But the mayor's office and the author of the email says there's no push to write more tickets. There are no quotas. That's probably what they'll say. Uh, it's so funny, too, because, you know, the majority of the times I've been pulled over is literally on the 30th or the 31st, the end of the month, when they have to fulfill their quotas. And uh, the, they even had one uh, state trooper had pizza parties to see who could write the most tickets. You remember that? So... And the last paragraph says an Atlanta police rep said the department has not issued any directive for officers to write more tickets. Sequester a middle finger gesture, IRS to pay $70 million in bonuses, so that would be the IRS or the union uh, evading the lawful cuts in executive order. So they're about to pay $70 million in employee bonuses, despite the Obama regime's directive to cancel bonuses because of automatic spending cuts enacted this year. So the whole thing about sequestering, right? Dad of five... Uh, jail fear as burglars walk free it's a weird worded headline uh, but basically the guy chased out these burglars and it says here now he's going to uh, go to jail so it says here he claims one of the raiders came at him with a plank which he grabbed and then used to hit the intruder the, clay, the case was adjourned to August a new law protects people who use force on burglars but only if they are inside their homes and basically the burgers, the two of them, were let off with a $75 fine. So that's the justice system. Burglary suspect flees after 84-year-old homeowner confronts him with a gun and shoots at a getaway car. So a burglary suspect sped away from this house in a hurry after the 84-year-old homeowner confronted him with a pistol. Illegal immigrants who commit crimes face lesser punishments than U.S. citizens, said according to John McCain. It says here, the uh, member of the Gang of Eight criminals will not be legalized under the proposed bipartisan immigration bill. Anyone who's committed crimes in this country is going to be deported. However, the Washington Examiner recently reported the bottom line is an immigrant could have more than three misdemeanor convictions in his background check and still qualify for legalization. It says here that um, a nonprofit organization that opposes liberalization of the immigration law compares the consequences for an array of crimes and discovered that while illegal immigrants may be exonerated and legalized, U.S. citizens and legal immigrants face years of incarceration or temporary expulsion from the country. Recovery, 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Roughly three quarters are living from paycheck to paycheck with little or no emergency savings, according to a survey. It says fewer than one in four Americans have enough money in their savings account to recover at least six months of expenses, enough to help cushion the blow of a job loss medical emergency or some other unexpected event according to a survey of a thousand adults meanwhile 50 percent of those surveyed have less than three month cushion and 27 percent had no savings at all nestle is going to gamble on the two new plants in china so the world's largest food company said it will open two factories in china next month in order to gain a market edge despite economic indicators of a slowing economy so 
Remember this? Uh, I covered this back in what uh, June or at least a couple of years ago. Nestle chocolate is produced from child labor. New report says so. Nestle has not done enough to combat child labor in the chocolate industry. So that's that's actually a pretty pretty good idea then. Next up, UK and China signed three-year currency swap to make business in Taiwan. The Bank of England and the Chinese counterpart have signed a deal likely to boost trade between the UK and China and the Yuan. So, next up, we have EU fuels national front in France as French minister. So, the France's minister of industrial renewal has blamed the European Union for fueling the far-right national front by putting too much pressure on elected governments. He says, I think the main cause of the rise of the uh, front national is related to the way in which the EU today exerts considerable pressure on democratically elected governments. He continued by saying the European Union is paralyzed. It does not respond to any of the people's aspirations in the industrial, economic, or budget fields, and in the end provides a cause to all the anti-European parties. The European Commission president describes states such as France as culturally extremely reactionary. A beauty pageant at the age of 78 might be considered extraordinary on its own, but there's even more to Hava Hershkovitz's story. The Romanian was one of 14 women, ages 74 to 97, who participated in the first Miss Holocaust survivor competition in Haifa, Israel. The finalists were selected based on personal stories of survival and rebuilding their lives after World War II, with physical appearance forming only a small part of the contest. Critics feel the competition was offensive, but that doesn't concern the delighted Hershkowitz. It's not easy at this age to be in a beauty contest, but we're all doing it to show that we're still here, she said. Man martyred as Italian Schindler now accused of being Nazi collaborator. A man credited with saving more than 5,000 Jews during World War II now stands accused of having actually been an enthusiastic Nazi collaborator. They determined that this Giovanni Palatucci, a former Italian police officer, helped deport Jewish men and women to Auschwitz during the war. It's a stark reversal for a man previously declared a martyr by Pope John Paul II. He also received awards by the ADL, it says down here. But uh, it goes on and it says that, if anything, uh, Palatucci represents the silence, self-righteous, and compliance of many young Italian officers who enthusiastically embraced Mussolini in his last disastrous steps. It says, interestingly, uh, Patucci himself died in a German concentration camp after being sent to Dachau in 1944 when he was charged with embezzlement and treason. So, uh, Swindler's List, or Schindler's List, uh, everybody... Uh, buys this that this guy is a big hero based on Spielberg's movie Schindler's List who's the latest hero of the Holocaust is presented as a German businessman who is playing the role of Pied Piper leads a column of poor Jews across Poland to safety after he decides he has made enough brass from slave labor much of his wealth was in fact generated from war production and while ever the money was to be made the German born Schindler supported the National Socialists but Schindler was in fact a traitor black marketer thief extortionist and basically had uh, child sex slaves. His sudden conversion to savior of the Jews only occurred when he obtained information from senior political uh, figures which confirmed uh, that the war would be over in six months or less. Survivors on outed Minnesota Nazi, what good is it now? So villagers reflect on the massacre by Michael Karkik's unit. So we talked about this just weeks ago. The uh, Minnesota man is a former Nazi was made known it says here that Polish survivors are revisiting a massacre uh, by Michael Kardik's unit. Records suggest that he was near the scene of the massacre as well as Ukrainian village, though there's no proof that he had direct hand in the attacks. It says as to the emergence of his past, what good is it now? It says a woman who is uh, six years old it says he's 94 and has spent so many years in peace and surrounded by his families. It says it was something so absolutely terrible. So. But it goes on here and it says that, but Karkik is old and they will most surely say that he is too weak to stand trial. Say Russia mulls jail terms for rehabilitation of Nazism. They're drafting a new bill proposing up to five years in prison for justifying the crimes of the Nazis and their collaborators, as well as questioning the actions of the Allies during World War II. So it says here, the Berlin Declaration of Germany's defeat from 1945, document listing both aggressor nations and allies who fought against Hitler's Germany. The same document confirms that Allied forces in World War II were defending international peace and security. Can you buy that shit? This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.